This story is about a woman that once ruled the streets of Overtown. She was a gangster that took other crews to war over territory and control over the streets of Miami. She would eventually go to trial and her top lieutenants would secretly cooperate against her and the judge would give her the max, a sentence of 20 years behind bars. This is the story of Avonda Dowling, the leader of Vonda's gang. Vonda is from a neighborhood in Miami named Overtown. Back in the days of segregation, African Americans were not allowed to settle down and make a home in certain parts of Florida. However, Overtown was different. So Overtown became known as Colored Town. Because of the way society was structured, they had insufficient jobs and educational opportunities, and it created a situation of hopelessness and survival. This is the environment that thousands of girls grew up in, and Vonda was one of those girls. After decades and decades of institutionalized neglect, an opportunity to make money arrived in a form of powder. The geography of Miami is situated where bundles of that stuff could easily be transported from Central and South America to the Bahamas, then to Miami. The Noriegas and Pablo Escobars of the world could get their product into the biggest market of users and abusers. That market was and still is today, America. And the entry to America is the port of Miami. Vonda's criminal career began after she graduated Carroll City High School. She would go on to be arrested more than 10 times for crimes associated with trafficking, aggravated assaults, and unlawful possession of weapons. This would put her in a world where she would work with a few gangsters from Miami that were good at trafficking bundles. This would be her apprenticeship and training for what Vonda would later become. Her boss would then be arrested and charged with multiple crimes and sent to prison for his criminal activities. And with him gone, Vonda would continue her infamous rise among the hitmen and dope boys that ran the streets of Overtown. Since everything came through the port of Miami, Vonda had an upper hand. As it turned out, her father was in the union for longshoremen. As you can see, it's a short trip from the port of Miami across the bridge to Overtown where Vonda had power. So she was in tune with all the movers and shakers on that end of things. But not only her father worked for the port, so did her brothers and her husband and father of her children. One of those children being Javante Jackson, who would grow up and later sign to the Philadelphia Eagles after he graduated. Her husband would later be arrested and charged with crimes related to the streets and when that happened, she moved even deeper into the underworld of crime and punishment. With this came enormous power that gave birth to a situation where Vonda was the connect for many other dealers in Florida, New York, the Carolinas, and all the cities in between. This was a big operation. In the late 1980s, the gang was getting to the money. Other wannabe hustlers would try and ease in on Vonda's territory, and there was only one way to handle those problems and her main problem solver was a man named Robert. One of those problems was a hustler. Let's call him Marlo. Marlo was getting to the money, but he made a mistake by trying to expand on territory that Vonda already claimed to be hers. So it's alleged that she sent Robert on a mission to take care of Marlo, and he did. Marlo didn't make it. Robert was paid with dirty money and powder for a job well done. Her soldiers were all hitmen. They would win some, but they would also take losses. One of those men, named Jamal, was ambushed and hit a few times as revenge. He would end up surviving, but left paralyzed and bound to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. In the mid-1980s, an epidemic hit the streets. It got big in New York with Jamaican gangs led by people like Delroy Uzi Edwards. Then it worked its way back into Miami. That epidemic was cocaine. It's as innocent looking as candy. Since Vonda was already the plug for the main ingredients, she learned how to cook it up. And just like that, her status changed. Now, 
Some of her apartments that she owned was strictly dedicated to turning powder into rocks. The money was different. So now other hustlers like the Booby Boys, the John Doe's and other Miami street gangs started to do the same thing. But like any other business, since Vonda started earlier with a wider customer base, she had the market share. Vonda had a new fight on her hands as the money was so good, every gang in Miami started fighting over territory and things got crazy for the civilian citizens that just wanted to live a regular life. Vonda was so well connected she had members of law enforcement on her payroll. She would give them information on her competition to get those other guys out the way. Some of the people in Overtown would speak well about Vonda. To them, she was a charitable member of the community due to how she provided for the kids in the neighborhood during Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas time. Little did they know that Vonda's gang of soldiers were involved in a war with the rest of Miami that claimed over 30 lives and produced over 90 other violent incidents. Many of the people that were lost and injured didn't even have anything to do with it. They were innocent bystanders from the ages of 18 months, 5 years old, teenagers, middle-aged adults and senior citizens all suffered as a result of the trade in Miami. The level of violence was beyond what local law enforcement could handle as the gangs were using military-style weapons, which included grenades. In 1994, President Bill Clinton signed a bill that banned those kinds of weapons, but by then, the streets was already flooded with banana clips, and the local police were no match for the gangs with such artillery. So sometime around 1997, a task force was formed. This task force was a joint operation of local and federal law enforcement, which increased the resources that could be used against the gangsters in Miami. The Fed started looking at all the old cases that were committed by felons that used a firearm during a crime. For whatever the reason, the state cases were dismissed from state courts. But those cases were now subjected to federal courts with mandatory minimums. Law enforcement started rounding up these felons which included Vonda, Kenneth Booby Williams and their top hitmen and hustlers. So one by one, members of the Booby Boys, John Doe's and Vonda's gang were getting locked up with 10 year minimums. This took them off the streets for at least 10 years, which took effect on the whole city of Miami. This caused violent crimes like drive-bys to drop 80%. It kept the violent ones off the streets and created a situation where everyone from Vonda's gang started to snitch on each other and started telling gang secrets in order to shorten their time behind bars. Sometime around 1998, Vonda was arrested and would remain in prison for a few years while going to trial and fighting her case from behind bars. Many of the men and women that were a part of the gang were also in prison, serving lengthy sentences, so they did what criminals do. They started to cooperate against Vonda. They gave investigators the inside scoop on the operations. They would secretly testify before a grand jury and disclose information about all the bodies that piled up during the war with the Booby Boys. Her top lieutenants would tell law enforcement that they members of the Booby Boys because their boss, Vonda, ordered those hits. They said Vonda paid them to commit revenge and all sorts of incriminating information about the organization. At the end, more than 50 witnesses would come forward for the prosecution against Vonda. However, Vonda got lucky because she was never charged with any It should be noted that at the beginning of the trial, the prosecutors wanted to add charges that would have made her eligible for the death penalty, but that somehow was avoided. Instead, the judge, Judge Seitz, who was a daughter of a retired three-star general in the armed forces, gave Vonda the maximum. So at the end of 2003, at 40 years old, Vonda Dowling was sentenced to 20 years in prison. This was the cautionary tale of Vonda Dowling leader of Vonda's gang. If you enjoyed this content, give it a thumbs up and click on the next episode from Big City Crime TV.